The only reason I'm wearing a cap is because my hair is out of control. I haven't been able to get a haircut because of this whole situation, but I'm back with another intermediate full edit tutorial of this photograph of Monet where we're gonna cover a lot of stuff from frequency separation for the flyaways, the good old dodge and burn for skin retouching, and then we're gonna finalize it with some selections so that we can specifically color grade areas. If you guys wanna see the behind the scenes of this photograph and some posing tips, check out my Instagram because I post a lot of helpful content as well as post live edits in Capture One and that's all on my Instagram page. With that said, now let's cover todo el pedo. All right, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is I'm gonna go to my actions and I'm gonna set up my cleanup layer and I wanna get this little light pole out of the way and then we'll also go to the hair and get it with the flyaways with frequency separation. But I'm gonna zoom in here with Z on the keyboard. I'm gonna get my polygonal lasso tool. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna get close to the skin here and I'm just gonna basically draw a straight line all the way across so that I can get a selection here. There we go. I'm gonna push H on the keyboard. That's a shortcut that I've set up for the patch tool. And I'm gonna to see how the patch tool does. I'm gonna raise that up. I want it to look like this part. And that got, that took care of that. It looks like it missed this little piece, but that should be an easy fix right there. And then the same thing, I'm gonna zoom in here, push L on the keyboard to get the polygonal lasso tool. Going through here, control minus. And I'm gonna zoom in again. And right about there, double click, zoom out, push H. I'm gonna raise that up. And there we go. That pretty much takes care of the little wires from the poles there. And I think there's another little area over here that I'm gonna fix. I'm gonna hold H or press H. Select this, get that out of the way. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do frequency separation. Now the frequency separation, I'm gonna use it for these flyaways over here. So this area was very, very difficult to remove. Now there's two different ways that you can do this. One way is to get the clone stamp and just sample this part of the sky and then transfer it over but I was struggling to make it look smooth with the transitions of that gradient. So I felt like, okay, I'm gonna try a frequency separation. So I'm gonna get my frequency separation action. I'm gonna hit the play button here. Now what's important here is my radius because right here I'm separating the texture and the color. And what I wanna do is I wanna raise my radius so that I remove the hair from the color or the texture, I should say. So I'm gonna increase this some more. I'm gonna go about 40, 40 looks pretty good. I have to be careful with the skin, but I'm not gonna do too much skin retouching with frequency separation. I'm gonna reserve that more for dodge and burn, but you'll notice when I click, I've removed the hair. So I'm gonna hit okay. And what I'm gonna do when I have this action is I'm gonna make a duplicate of my texture layer because I wanna have the flexibility of using a layer mask. So if I make a mistake, I can brush it away or bring it back if I need to. So I'm gonna make a duplicate. I'm gonna set the blend mode to normal though. And I'm going to make a clipping mask. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna get the zoom tool. And what I've done is I'm gonna get the clone stamp. I'm gonna make sure it's set to current layer, 100%, 100% opacity. In that first step, when I was adjusting the radius and the Gaussian blur, the 40, what I was doing is that I was removing the hair texture from the color. So now I have them both separated. So what I wanna do is on my texture layer, cause that's where the hair's at, I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna grab texture from around this background sky. So I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna brush this in and you're gonna notice that that hair gets removed. And what's great is that I still keep this beautiful gradient of this sky still intact because I'm only moving the texture and not the color. But you're gonna notice there's gonna be some blotchy areas that are that's gonna happen in here because the texture and the color were kind of too, uh, very similar. So in that, in that case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the color layer and I'm gonna get the mixer brush. So if you're looking at these spots right now and looking at it like, what in the heck is he doing? Don't worry, I'm gonna fix that in a little bit. So I'm gonna do this pretty quick. 
Once again, don't worry about this part. Don't freak out. We're going to get to this in, in a moment, but I'm going to get some of these flyaways out. Here we go. And what's cool is if I make a mistake, that's why I made the duplicate of the texture. And I'm going to add a layer mask on that in a moment. So there's some areas right here that are off a little bit. So I'm going to add a layer mask. I'm going to hold B on the keyboard with a black brush because I want to remove that adjustment that I did. I don't want to see it here. So we're going to fix that. We'll leave those flyaways there. It'll be fine. That'll stay. We'll fix some of these areas right here. That'll be fine. I don't want to get them all out. So that's good. And then up here where I made a mistake, once again, I made the layer mask. I'm setting it to black so that I can remove those adjustments that I made where it didn't look that good. So I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to fix this area here. So I have my left hand on the bracket keys on the keyboard and I'm zooming in so that I can just remove these areas. Now we still have some blotchy areas here. And what I need to do now is I need to go to my color layer and I'm going to use the mixer brush. So I'm going to mix in this color and I'm going to push it in so that we don't have like that red brownish color there. I'm going to bring in some of those blues with the mixer brush. So I'm going to hold shift B. Got the mixer brush. These are my settings up here. My settings change all the time. And now I'm going to get a bigger brush and I'm going to be brushing in some of this color so we can kind of blend it through. Now I'm going to be going a little excessive and I'm going to be going into the hair on purpose because I'm going to mask that away in a moment. So it's all about the masks and having that flexibility. See how I have that blue in the hair now? Don't worry about that. I'm just trying to fix up these little transitions in here and I'm going to mask that away where it did get into the hair or in the skin. Okay. All right. So I'm going to add another mask here and with the black brush, let me push shift B. I was on the mixer. Now I can remove it from those areas right there. Beautiful. Okay. Now I still have this little hair here that I want to fix. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to hold alt. And I want to even that up right there. So let's take a look at the before and after real quick. What do we got? This is the before and then the after fixing the flyaways. Now there's some areas that I'm going to go ahead and fix here. I'm going to fast forward this part. I'm going to try to get it, you know, somewhat perfect. I'm not going to spend too much time, but I'm going to just try to fix up some of those areas there. So what I've decided to do here is I'm going to blend it a little bit easier. If I just grab the clone step and grab some of this guy and then transfer it over, since it's just a small spot, it'll, it should work out just fine. So I'm going to get the clone stamp. I'm going to go all layers. I'm going to grab this section here and just simply brush it in right there. Brush it in right here. Add a mask. Set it to black. And that should take care of it. I think that's, that looks good for now. I doubt anybody's going to zoom in so much there. So there you go. So we got the flyaways out. I'm going to hit the before and then the after I'm using frequency separation, using the mixer brush and the texture for that. Now, if you felt like, man, that was a little bit overwhelming. I do have a frequency separation tutorial on my YouTube channel. Check that out. It's more of a beginner level. So check it out so that you can follow through with that. So now what I want to do that I have already fixed the flyaways is now I'm going to use the mixer brush to kind of set up the skin tones. So I'm going to get the mixer brush and 
my settings are up there and I'm just going to kind of push and blend things just a little bit. I don't want to do too much in this specific example because I'm going to be doing a lot more dodge and burn. But if I can fix the bigger areas with frequency separation, that'll save me some time. Go. Let me zoom in here. And I'm just looking at these transition areas, and just trying to get them to blend a little bit easier, a little bit smoother, I should say. Let me take off the black and white. Control minus. I'm going to get this cheekbone shadow and I'm going to just drag it in just a little bit. Looks good. I'm going to push this up. Good. Push that. And what was cool about this photo show, this is my first time shooting with Monet, by the way. And uh, what inspired this photograph was the uh, the sun hitting the car, by the way. And there we go. So let's take a look. I'm going to zoom out. Let's take a look at the skin, hit the before and then the after. I can also hit this little color layer before, after. That's looking good. And then I also want to come back and then work with this little area here with the shoulder. I'm going to make my brush bigger. And just kind of fade it off just a little bit. Right there. Okay, zoom out. So a lot of it is just zooming out, zooming in, just double checking everything, making sure everything looks like, looking good. So before and then the after. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. It's looking good. I think I just want to blend in the skin just a little bit more right here. there and I'm gonna go to the nose there we go so now we're gonna get into dodge and burn and we're gonna put a little bit more emphasis on the skin retouching by zooming in and getting a little bit more of the detailed areas so I'm gonna go ahead and close up my frequency separation I'm gonna go to my dodge and burn I'm gonna hit the play I'm gonna switch to my brush tool and I'm gonna get my todo el pedo brush and now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and smooth out these transitions. And I'm going to go with the dodge first. The dodge is going to lighten. And I'll start off doing a little bit of dodge and burn. If you guys follow this full tutorial series, you know that I'm going to fast forward it only because it might take up some time. I do have a tutorial once again that you guys can check out. Make sure you check out the rest of my YouTube channel tutorials, I have beginner level stuff, I have behind the scenes, just a bunch of stuff. So make sure you guys check it out, especially if you're new to the channel. So I'm just gonna kind of go for the bigger areas once again. I'm gonna focus on those first and just trying to get everything to where I like it. The key thing is, is zooming in and out, working with your helper layer, just to get things to where you like it. Now you can be as detailed as you want with this, or you can do kind of like a simple base edit. It's really gonna be up to you on your philosophy when it comes down to editing. So let's go ahead and check the progress of my dodge and burn. I haven't really done a lot, but let's take a look at it. This is the before and then the after. I'm gonna hold Alt on the dodge so you can see exactly where I lightened up areas. And this is where I burned areas. Didn't really have to burn a lot, but now that I take a look at it again for a second time, I forgot that I need to come in here. I 
really want to emphasize this little cheekbone right here. So let me hold Alt. There we go. And by emphasizing that cheekbone there, that's going to really make her pop. I'm going to add a little bit more burn. And that's one of the mistakes that I do is I always feel like I can use my burn to my advantage. I focus sometimes too much on the dodge and I forget to use the burn feature. So I'm going to add another dodge curves. This is going to be for my global. But this time I'm going to change my flow to about 8%. And I'm going to try to bring things out like the hair here. I'm going to bring out the earrings. And I'm just going to add one little dab of dodge right there. I'm going to go into the eyes, just brighten them up just a little bit. We're going to work with the eyes in a moment, but I do want to add just a little bit of exposure to the eyes. And the lips, let me zoom in. There we go. So let's look at the contouring of that. That looks good. I'm gonna hold Alt so you guys can see where I did it. <laughs> that looks funny. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but you got it. You pretty much see it there. There you go. So before and then the after. If I felt like I went too much, I could always lower it down to like maybe 85, 84. There we go. So let's take a look at the before and after of the frequency separation. Let's focus more. I'm going to leave it zoomed in because we're mainly working with the face and the flyaways and stuff at the beginning. So let's hold Alt. Let's see the before and then the after, before and the after. So now I'm going to focus on the eyes. I'm going to use a 50% gray layer set to overlay. So let's go ahead and set that up. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to push control A to select the entire canvas, shift F5. And I'm going to go to 50% gray. We're going to make sure that this is set to overlay. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay as well. The brush tool. We're going to make sure that we set this flow to two. And then I'm going to zoom in here. And we're just going to add just a little bit of exposure and some life to those eyes. So I'm going to just brush in just a little bit here. I'm going to make sure that that catch like it's nice and bright in there. And if I go a little bit too far, it's OK, because I can use the opacity right now to help me control some of the areas. There we go. There we go. And let me zoom out, control minus, and let's take a look at this before and then the after. I do think it is a little bit too much, so I'm going to bring it down to maybe like 80. Because sometimes I have the tendency to get like too cute sometimes, so tone it down. So 79, same thing. Bam, bam. That looks good. I like it. So now we're going to focus on the color grading. We're going to color grade the skin tone. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the selective color. So I'm going to go here to the adjustment layer icon. We're going to go to selective color. And I'm going to focus on the reds. The reds I started off with negative four. Now remember that with the science, if I drag it to the right, it adds more science to my reds. And if I drag it to the left, it's going to add more red. So I'm going to go negative four here. And selective color is really good for skin tones, especially selecting the red and the yellow channels. So these are the numbers that I selected for my reds. I'm going to go to my yellows now. And on this one, I went negative four, two, and then five. So that there kind of controlled my skin tones just a little bit, just a subtle difference. Now there's not a lot of reds and yellows in this image. Like they have these yellows right here and these reds. So those adjustments, yes, I could use a layer mask to control that, but it's it's not gonna hurt these little tones here that much. So I like the tones that I got here, but I also wanna control the beautiful blues that I got back there. So now I'm gonna select my cyan and I'm gonna go cyan, I'm gonna go 27. 
to really make those cyans pop a little bit. And then negative one and negative one on the magentas and the yellows. I'm also gonna target the blues because obviously we still have these blues and cyans back here. So I'm gonna go plus 25 on the cyans. Negative two and then negative nine. And then the last one was just neutrals. The yellows, we're just gonna add just a little bit of that yellow and drag it to the right. Now we're gonna start using selections to our advantage. We wanna specifically target now the background and not affect the subject, which is Monet, and color grade her. We wanna color grade the background. And then we're gonna make another selection specifically of just the sky so that we can target those tones. So to start off, there's an awesome little selection preset built into Photoshop. If I go to select and then I go to subject, it'll automatically do its best job to make a selection of the subject. And you notice down here, it kind of didn't do a great job, which is fine. I'm gonna get the quick selection tool. I'm gonna hold alt so I can get the negative and subtract. And this part doesn't necessarily have to be like super perfect down here. And there you go, pretty much have it right there. So now what I wanna do, now that I have my selection, I'm gonna go down here to the adjustment icon and we're gonna select the color balance. Now, once I do that, and actually, you know what? I made a mistake here. What I wanna do is I'm gonna make sure I have my lasso tool selection. And the reason why I made a mistake there is that right now I have my feather set to zero and I don't want that. I want a nice soft edge. If I leave it at zero, it's gonna leave a sharp edge. So what I wanna do is I wanna right click, I wanna feather it, and I'm gonna put it about 40. You can do 50, 60, 70, it's up to you. But 40 will give it like a nicer, softer edge. And now I'll go back and then I'll go into my color balance. And now right now here in the layer mask, what it's basically saying is that I have her selected. So when I color grade it, I'm actually color grading her, which I don't wanna do. I wanna do the opposite. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna select the layer mask, I'm gonna press control I to invert that. Now what's in white is the background, black is the selection of her. So I'm not gonna color grade her, which is fantastic. So now I'm gonna color grade the background. What I did is I went into my midtones and I added just a little bit of red. Then I went into my shadows and I went to negative two to add a little bit of cyan to my background and then four on the blues. On the highlights, I added plus six to add some of those red tones and then negative three to add some of those yellows. So this is the before, just a small difference and then the after, before and then the after. Now what I wanna do is we talked about selecting just the sky. So I'm gonna go back to the quick selection tool. I'm gonna make sure we're set at the plus here. And now what I wanna do is I wanna select just the background, sky, and if I have the palm tree, that's fine. But I don't necessarily want some of this other stuff here. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make sure that we don't have a hard edge here. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna feather. And this time I'm gonna feather it about 60. So we have a nice soft edge. And this time, instead of using color balance, I'm gonna go to curves. And the reason why I wanna go to curves is because I am gonna go into the red channels and we know the opposite of red is gonna be in the cyans. What I wanna do is I wanna make this background sky more cyan and we know that this is in our highlights. So when I go into curves, the way it works is here from left to right is my darks, my shadows, my midtones, and then my highlights. If I go here, opposite of red is gonna be cyan. When I bring this down, you'll notice that I'm adding cyans into my highlights. So I wanna drag this down to a reasonable number to maybe around 238 looks good. So when I hit the eyeball before and then the after, you're gonna see that I've added some of those beautiful cyan tones into my sky. Now if I hold Alt, you'll notice that you see this little soft edge. This is that feather that I was talking about earlier. If I leave it at zero uh, percent on the radius, it's gonna be a hard edge and it's not gonna blend as smooth. So it's very important for you to add that nice feather. And let's look at the feather here. Now this one I believe was at 40 and then this one was at 60. But so far I'm gonna group all of these together. I'm gonna hold shift 
or control and then G to group it. This is the before and after of the simple color grade. And we're going to do one more color grade, which is going to be my curves color grade. And what this basically does is that it just adds a nice red pop to the skin tones just a little bit. It just adds just a subtle pop. And so this is the before and then the after. Real subtle, but I think what really helped here was selecting those blues with the curves and just adding those nice cyans to the image. I'm going to rename this just so that I don't get confused. I'm going to go to color grading. And there we go. We're almost done with this image, so don't leave, guys. We have some cool things that we're going to get to. So the next thing is to go into the camera raw. So I have a raw Vato Loco actions. So I'm going to hit the play here. And basically what this does is that it's going to merge everything together, make it into a smart object. And then I'm going to go into camera raw to make some more adjustments. So I'm going to go into camera raw. I've already saved this preset with the exact settings that I used, and we're going to cover them right now. So I'm going to go to load and we're going to go to Monet YouTube and I'm going to hit OK. And now this brought this image to life. So we brought the exposure back up to uh, one. We got 15 on the shadows and the blacks at 18 to bring up uh, the detail back. Keep in mind, there's a lot of blacks and darks in this image. So that's why I brought up the shadows and the blacks there. I'm also going to go into my luminance. And here I brought up the oranges because of the skin tone, the reds because of the skin tone, of course. Brought down a little bit of the blues, brought a little bit of the aquas down. The blues kind of controlled them down, brought the saturation to negative 10, and the hue didn't do anything. Split toning added uh, four to my highlights, which is a little bit of that teal look, and then a little bit of yellows into my shadows. Added a little bit of grain, about 10. Did a little bit of vignetting at negative five. And then the calibration, the important one here is going to be the saturation. Bringing this up really makes those colors pop. Um, and I used 14. Now that I look at it, I think I'm going to add just a little bit more as I'm editing this image for a second time. And then some of these elements are really great for the skin tone, for the skin tones. So don't disregard the other ones. The other ones are super awesome as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And so this is looking nice before and then the after so far. Now I'm going to add a little bit of blues into the shadows. So I'm going to go back to my curves. I'm going to go into my blues channel. I'm going to anchor it right about here. And I'm going to bring this up. So right here is my shadows. And then as I lift this up, it goes into the highlights. And as I raise it up, it's going to add some blues into the shadows. So I'm going to not bring it up like that much, but I'm going to bring it up to maybe about, let's go seven and before and then the after. So, so a nice little touch to the shadows. I'm going to go ahead and select everything in my layers. I'm going to press control G, put it in a group and make it into a smart object. Now is a good time to double check my dodge and burn before I get to the final steps of this photograph and the editing. So as this is kind of turning it into a smart object, I'm going to be running my dodge and burn action one more time, just in case I missed the spot. Or maybe as I was color grading, some spots kind of maybe appeared a little bit more, some inconsistencies. So it's always a good idea to come back to dodge and burn and to kind of make sure things are looking good. All right, so now I'm going to go back to dodge and burn. I'm going to hit the play button here. And I'm going to double check because every time you edit, it's always going to look a little bit different the second time you edit. And I am going to burn just a little bit of some of these areas. I do see some areas that I would like to kind of even out just a little bit. So that part looks good. I'm going to dodge just a little bit of these areas over here. Okay. So nothing too crazy. Didn't really have to adjust too many things. I think the dodge and burn looks good, at least from my end on my computer. It's looking fine. There we go. Looks nice. 
So what I want to do next is I want to make the skin pop a little bit. I want to add just a little bit of brightness to the face. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use Levels and Blend If to make her pop just a little bit. So what I'm going to do next is I am going to go into my Levels. And I'm going to go into my highlights and drag that to the left. And you'll notice that the skin starts to pop a little bit, which is cool. But sometimes as I'm increasing this, it increases it to the entire image and it brings up certain areas that I might not want. So in this case, I'm just going to double click in my levels and I'm going to go into my underlying layer and I'm just going to remove just a little bit from my shadows. And you'll notice that look right here in the car and some of the dark areas as I'm bringing this in, it's removing it. So basically I'm saying start from make that adjustment, the levels from my highlights to my midtones and in a little bit into my shadows, but I'm going to blend that off by holding alt and I'm going to break apart this little triangle so that I can smooth it out. So right about there, it looks good. So here's my before and then the after adding a little bit of pop to the face. Now the shadows, I do want to work with the shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select, I'm going to go to color range, and I'm going to select specifically the shadows because I want to bring up the exposure specifically there, but I want to want it to be a little bit more controlled. So what I'm going to do is from sample color, I'm going to select the shadows. And then here I have the fuzziness and the range that I can manipulate. But in this example, I'm going to use 32 and 46. This num these numbers will be different depending on your image. And I'm going to hit OK. So now that I've got that selected, what I want to use now is I want to use my curves. So what it's going to do is I'm going to apply a mask to that, which is really cool. So now in white are my shadows that I want to manipulate and I want to bring up the exposure just a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to set up some anchors. So I'm going to go here into my curves and I'm going to set an anchor here so I don't adjust my midtones. And I'm going to set an anchor here so I don't adjust my shadows and then set up another anchor. Because if I don't do that, let me show you what happens. If I want to bring up my shadows, see how it's manipulating everything else? And I don't want that to happen. All right. So that's why I'm setting up those anchors so that it doesn't manipulate any of my highlights. It doesn't manipulate any of my the areas that I don't necessarily want to adjust. So now that I've kind of have those anchors in place. Now I'll go into my shadows and my blacks areas and I'll just increase this just ever so slightly and just bring back just a little bit more detail because we do have a lot of blacks because of the car and the jacket. I don't want it to get too dark in those areas. And I do want to bring back just a little bit of those tones. So I'm going to bring this up just a little bit more and right about there looks pretty good. Now, the final step is to add just some final skin toning to the image and then we're pretty much done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my gradient map tone. I'm going to hit the play button here and this is going to be this is a really cool um, gradient map that I love. And it adds this nice kind of color to the skin tone. So let's take a look at it. This is the before and then the after. So I love it. Super awesome. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit, though. I'm going to put it back around 20. Now, I don't want it to apply to the entire image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control I to invert this. So I'm going to press Control I so it's not showing up anywhere. And now, obviously, I specifically just wanted to see this in the skin tone. So I'm going to brush just on the skin and there we go. So I'm actually going to bring this down to maybe about 15. So let's bring it up to about 15. And now let's take a look at the before and after. So I'm going to hold alt. This is the before and then the after. Let's zoom out just a little bit more so you guys could see all the rest of the image before and then the after. And that concludes the tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe because my next video is probably going to be a full edit only using Capture One. I've been getting a lot of questions on Capture One. So that's probably going to be my next video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.